So, okay. So, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel, the IITN Coders. In this video, we will be, so before that, I am having a little issues with my mic because currently I am using an old headphone that might be causing a little bit of disturbance in my So, I request you to please, like, just bear with that for some videos till I get the mic fixed. And so now let us move on to this problem, I will this is quite an easy problem and we can solve it easily by just seeing it. So let's actually like get on and let's try to solve the problem. So what do we actually have here? Let's see it. So we have an I and a J and we are given an array of size n. Initially the array is filled with zeros and there are n types of operations that we can perform on the array and the ith operation is described by two integers which are x, y, y and in each operation we can choose the set of indices such that j is between 1 and n and j is not divisible by y i and it is equal to zero. So here note the case that j mod y i is not equal to zero. That means the problem a lot 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 easier and we can set it to each exercise so we can perform the operations in any order and with one type of operation can be modern more than one so this is like the that's of the situation like one type of operation can be more can be done more than one we don't even need to do one kind of operation more than one so even if it wasn't there it doesn't make any difference and we can perform the operations in any order makes our life a lot easier because now we know when there is no ordering we need to use a greedy algorithm so i basically give the problem away by saying greedy but okay let's still try to understand what to do so what is the maximum sum of integers of the array a you obtain if you perform them operations optimally so let's just note here that suppose you are to replace some numbers. We are given, okay, test case number is something weird. Yeah, so we are given phi 2. So I would obviously want to replace majority of the elements with the highest number possible. So let's take it up in Spain. Okay, so this was the previous solution. Yeah, so we have some tuples, say, x0 y0 x1 y1 x2 and y2 x3 and y3 and so on okay so we obviously want more of the numbers to have a higher x3 that calls for sorting so we'll basically sort by x3. So x3, we sort in descending order based on x. So it can be anything, okay, let's say x2, y2. So I rename everything without loss of similarity. So now x0, x1. Uh, note that the initial x0, y0 is different from x0, y0. We have just sorted them, so sort them, and then just I am renaming them for our convenience. So now x0 is greater than x1 is greater than x2. Okay, greater than equal to x1 greater than x2. Greater than equal to x3 and so on. So now we just need to find a way. So see, first I have 1, 2, 3, 4, till n. Take all the numbers which are divisible by y0. Suppose this, this and this are divisible. So I replace all the others with x1, x0. So this becomes x0, 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 x0. x0. Great, so now I have the maximum number of 
things I could have replaced with x0 and I did that. I am left with numbers like 3, let's suppose y0 was 3. So I am left with numbers like 3, 6, 9, 12, so on. Now comes the tricky part here. What would you like to do? Simple. You can see that all numbers have a common 3. Take it out. 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And we are left with x and y. Uh, you can read this as y and two. So, do you actually see the problem here that we have solved? We just used x0, y0, replaced some x0 and converted the problem back to our 1 to n problem with just m minus 1 operations left. Keep on recursively doing this and you will end up with 0 operations left and you can just print out the sum of the replaced numbers that you have got and you have kept track of up till now. So this was the major approach and solution. We actually devised it. Now the problem is just computing it. So how do we actually compute it is the issue, right? So I have shown you that how we computed it here. It was just integer division because we all we need all the numbers divisible by this and uh, why not? And similarly it could happen here just with this three we need to set how much of the part of three is divided by why not? or y1 or y2 for that case. So you can take GCD for that. Take GCD of y0 and 3. Divide y0 by, okay, this is y1 we are talking about. Take y1 and divide by uh, GCD. So y1 is divided by GCD of y1 and 3. Now this is the number left for this 1, 2 and so now just divide the number left by this. So you see that we have formed a recursive solution here. Go ahead, try to implement it. If you are successful, well and good. Return to my channel and subscribe it. And if you are still unable to implement this, go ahead, mail me ask for help and I will be happy to help you so that you progress and in the next challenge you can solve the questions by yourself. So I hope this problem was interesting and you learned a lot from this. I won't be sharing the code in this video because I just think that otherwise you won't be trying to implement it yourself and you wouldn't learn but if you can't implement it and have problems go ahead and mail me and don't forget to hit the like button subscribe button and the notification bell for the upcoming problem solution thank you and bye bye let's just wait for 20 seconds to round off the time duration I just like it more than